Hey, and just a quick reminder that the audio-only versions of these Vital MX interviews are available on the Vital MX podcast page. Search for it anywhere you get your pods and let your friends know about it. What's up, guys? It's Darkside from Vital MX, and today I have the partnership manager for Michelin Two Wheel. You guys know him from the Pulp MX show, Randy Richardson. What's going on, Randy? Hey, how are you doing, man? Uh, I'm I'm a bit confused. I, I thought I was having an interview with Jamie today, uh, um, well, but I'm I'm, he's in the I'm room. not but I'm not opposed to talking the dark side. So, he's uh, in the room. Uh, hey, let me get him, Jamie. Come here. What's up, man? Hey, Randy, how you doing? Hey, Jamie, man, just the guy I wanted to talk to, buddy. Awesome, awesome. How are you, man? I kicked that dark side guy out. He's out of here. He's an idiot. <laughs> what an idiot. All right. All right. Uh, <laughs> Listen. We can't, hey, we, we can't have two idiots on the phone, me being the primary. Oh, you were the first. So, okay. Uh, I thought you were still yeah. talking about me, Jamie. <laughs> no, no, no. Just me, buddy. Randy, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, I want to give people from Vital that maybe maybe they don't listen to the Pulp Mix show. Maybe they don't know who you are and know a lot about Michelin and their, uh, their role in motorcycle racing on the two-wheel side. So let's get to know you. Uh, you're okay. still a racer. You race professionally a little bit. You have a major passion for two wheels. Where did that love for motorcycles come from? Um, it, it, it came from a, a birthday gift uh, for my fourth birthday. So oh, September of 1970, I received a 1971 uh, Yamaha JT1. Uh, mini enduro which was a you know a revolutionary bike for the yamaha brand back then in that it was the first you know small truly off-road capable little dirt bike that 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 changed uh, i think a lot of people's lives um so i received that from mom and dad my dad uh, had gotten into um dirt bike riding had some hodakas uh, you know which was a japanese brand the early invasion of some of the japanese brands and so he had a hodaka i thought he was and i still think he is my hero oh. i'm still blessed to ride with him to this day he's 78 and still rides occasionally with me but yeah i got that little yamaha mini enduro and uh, luckily uh with with a seat uh, you know with a little butt on the seat and nuts on the tank i could i could reach the foot pegs not the ground but the foot pegs right, right. and uh yeah and 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 dad you know sent me out across the yard and man it that thing moved my soul and just stirred me uh and and uh, stirred my spirit you know in ways that it still does to this day so so that's where that passion uh started and and i'm still blessed to have it with me to this day that's awesome. So obviously your dad getting you involved and having a little interest in riding. That's it's a great father son thing. That's how I got involved with it as a young mm-hmm. kid. Talk about your your youth, your life, you know, with dad growing up, going to riding. Was it racing right away? Was it just father and son going trail riding? What was that like? Yeah, so for us just uh primarily trail riding. Um dad dad did race uh, he raced motocross uh, early on on the Hodakas and and uh, and and he won some you know some southeastern championships uh, you know on 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 motocross back then and I'm not sure why I know he made kind of the transition to to racing enduro and and began racing you know, some DKW and some Penton and then and then kind of he kind of settled in on Husqvarna which is where my passion for the Husqvarna brand now you know uh, kind of comes from um but i would i would go with him to let's say some motocross tracks and maybe ride around out in the pits or whatever Mm -hmm. um and then as i got older and more capable and and things that he taught me about motorcycle riding you know look ahead and choose your lines and things that i later apply in life you know how how about look ahead how about when you come out of the gate don't go left yeah don't go left (laughs) don't go left yeah um no but it's but it's really there's so many uh so many true life examples that can apply for motorcycling that I later realized, but, but nonetheless, I, I would follow my dad through the woods, you know, and, and progressed on different bikes. And I can remember, you know, primarily riding in the woods on old Yamaha YZ 80, uh, would have been, you know, probably late seventies, mid late seventies and, and just following him through the woods and crossing creeks and him helping me get up hills and, mm. and, and him following me and giving me some pointers. And anyway, so that's where my, my youth of motorcycle riding, I, I definitely had interest of racing at a young age. Um, but, uh, and dad was kind of, I don't want to say against it, but he wasn't super supportive of that. I think he was kind of getting finished with racing and so i never raced as a kid i just we just rode recreationally just trail riding and things like that so that's how i grew up riding and sharing that 
love for motorcycles with my dad. And then that was, you know, wheeling in our yard to see who could <laughs> yeah. wheelie the farthest. And, and it was just a, it was an amazing, uh, life experience that, that he and I shared and still share to this day. I love that. I love that. Anybody that does know you knows you, you're, you're a very humorous guy, quick witted, always have the one liners ready to go. Uh, <laughs> Does that come from someone in your family, your mom, your dad? Is that or yeah, something? Yeah, you- that, that that definitely comes from dad. He <laughs> he has an amazing, uh, you know, uh, quick wit and sense of humor. He's a little bit more of a quiet person. You know, if you met him, he wouldn't be nearly you know as outgoing as I am. I I, I told someone one time, or told my parents one time. I said, yeah, I told someone that I get my you know my sense of humor from dad and my talkativeness or what have you um, from from mom. You know, and 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 my mom goes. I don't talk that much, do I? And dad and I just kind of look at each other. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a mix of those two. Um, but yeah, dad certainly is quick wit and, uh, he's, he's, uh, f- funny story as a kid, he was going to teach me how to, uh, tighten the chain on, uh, my little Yamaha, little mini Enduro. And mm-hmm. so we put it up on this little metal milk crate and this and that, and he lo- loosens the axle bolt and I'm probably five, you know, and he's telling me, all right, so we're going to do this and we adjust these chain adjusters and this is tighten the chain. And I, I look and as a kid in a child's mind, I said, dad, that's not, that's not tightening the chain. You're just moving the wheel back, <laughs> which so, so, so to this day, here I am 56 years old. And just last week I was working on my little Husqvarna 150 down in his shop and I'm over there putting a new uh, Michelin star cross six on the back anyway. And, and he looks and he, I got the rear wheel off. He goes, you tighten that chain or you just moving the wheel back. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. It's, it's 50 years later, dad. And it's still funny. He so still, still remembers. I love it. <laughs> he still razzes me about it. Yeah. That's great. Well, as I mentioned though, it's at later in your life, you do make some professional races. So you clearly started to take racing seriously at some point. When, when was that yeah. decision made? Yeah, I rode, uh, I guess it would have been probably, hmm, 85 or 1985 or 1986 and i and i kind of ridden through high school you know trail ride and and you know you get more interest in high school you know i started i got into uh van halen and chasing girls or whatever right but so i didn't really ride as much through the teenage years but but certainly did some Mm -hmm. but it was uh after high school, going to, to technical college and, and, and had a bike and went to some local outlaw, you know, motocross race. And honestly, I had a Yamaha IT 200 that I raced. My very first motocross race was in the quote enduro class, which means you had to have a headlight. So, <laughs> right. um, but from there, I guess I, and then I, and then it would have been 1990 fast forward to 1990. Uh, I had, uh, a friend and coworker at Michelin that, uh, had won a lot of Loretta Lynch championships in the vet classes, a gentleman named Steve Lewis. And he, he said, man, you, you ride good. You need to go do an AMA race. So off the Muddy Creek we go and I sign up and get an AMA license and rode in the C class in 1990 and, and, and then rode B class, I think 91, 92, and then progressed pretty quickly within racing just because I had such a great base of riding experience, whether it be on track or trails or crossing creeks jumping creeks whatever and I, yeah so i turned uh, i got my ama pro license or whatever pro am license whatever so for 1993 94 95 um i i, I attended and participated in uh the ama supercrosses i would always do atlanta daytona charlotte tampa and orlando simply because they were close you know right and and at that time, I was already working with Michelin in an engineering role and certainly wasn't trying to make a career of racing. I was more so just wanting to be you know, a, a part of that. I'd take my vacation days and go qualify. I always qualified for the nighttime um, and in the 250 class. And then in 95, I was uh, I rode some 125 and, and made one 125 main event in Charlotte 95. And that was the you call it the pinnacle of my racing career. Yeah. Yep, 18th overall is what I've got here. Yeah. Heck not yeah. bad. 18th. Not bad at all. That's uh, um, that's better than I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's good. It's good. That's- and Travis and, and ironically, Travis Pastrana and I are tied in uh 250 CC uh, supercross wins. Yes, you are. Yes, you with, are. Yeah. With zero. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. He, he loves it when I remind him of that. Yes. Sure. That's so. awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I was going to ask you if you actually ever had dreams of making it professionally and you kind of answered that you were already working at Michelin, which was my next question. Mm-hmm. 
How did you yeah. get into the industry with Michelin? How did that start as an engineer? You said, yeah. So, so, so I, I, I'll use light, I'll use uh, air quotes engineer. So I graduated okay. from Greenville technical college with, with, uh, engineering, a mechanical engineering degree and engineering graphics, uh, you know, computer aid graphics or what have you. Um, and, and had grown up in my dad's tool and die machine shop. So that's where I guess I got a fair bit of mechanical aptitude, you know, early on an understanding of blueprints and mechanical things. And I, and and I learned how to move the rear wheel back, right? At a young <laughs> yeah. Age, that, yeah, it was uh, your to first lesson. The chain, to tighten the chain. But so, yeah, so I hired in uh, after college, hired in with Michelin and, 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 and a maintenance role initially, then into the engineering department. And there I met, as I referenced this guy, Steve Lewis, and, and got more active in motorcycle racing. And then it was later on, it would have been 1995. Yeah, 1995. I learned of, wait. So we make dirt bike tires. I didn't even know that, right? Because I'm working in a manufacturing facility where we were, uh, or an engineering role in a manufacturing facility where we made semi-finished products for the automotive division. Of okay. Michelin. And I learned, wait, there's Michelin motorcycle tires, and I connected with someone in there, and they gave me, you know, I'll call it sponsorship. I think I got six or eight uh, free tires for 1995 uh, for my racing efforts. So. So the first, I'm very proud to be the first to use uh, Michelin tires in an AMA Supercross in '95. I'm pretty sure. So, because um, no no one else was using them, then, right. trust me. Yeah, um, well, they've come yeah, a long so way, right? Yeah, and then through that relationship with that fellow, I, you know, I was able to to move into a, a, a technical liaison. Was my first. Uh, call it job title within Michelin two wheel. I was a technical liaison working between um, our sales team here in the U S and, and our, our counterparts uh, on the technical side uh, over in France. And so it was a pretty cool role. And, and we were so small back then, you know, we, you know, to share, not to share numbers, but to share the ratio, we certainly did not sell as many tires, motorcycle tires in North America uh, in the year 1995 and 96 and 97 or what have you, as, as we, as we sell each month now. So oh, obviously nice. our market share has grown and, and, uh, and I've been, I've been very blessed to be within the two wheel division of Michelin for over a couple of decades now. And, and, uh, that's where I plan to stay as long as they'll have me. <laughs> was that a big part of your role was helping to get a bigger footprint in the off-road side U- U.S. market? Yeah, yeah, somewhat. Yeah, somewhat. We we So in the end of 99, um, we had a new Star Cross range of tires that was coming. And uh, David Villeman, who, who you know, was obviously a French rider uh, and based in motocross GP, who was uh, very instrumental in the development of the initial Star Cross range, the MS2 and the MH2, um, we were looking at um, pursuing a larger footprint in Supercross Motocross in the year 2000. And when Villeman came over to go to Yamaha for 2000, he actually tested uh, Michelin versus Bridgestone in the end of 99. And so there was, we possibly were going to get that. That didn't work out. Um, Bridgestone did a great job of, of coming back with some solutions that he liked as good as the Michelin. So they stayed with Bridgestone. And then um, I was, uh, involved in having uh, our on-site support with uh, a company called Competition Direct. So we had them contracted to do our trackside involvement for Supercross and Motocross in 2000. And at that time, we had a was more of a marketing partnership with KTM North America to where we supported their, you know, uh, quote, factory race team for Supercross and Motocross, which that's where I met Steve Mathis was mm-hmm. a mechanic on that team back then. And also their off-road uh, efforts, you know, with with Shane Watts and Mike Lafferty and different ones. So, so it was more of a corporate marketing uh, agreement, but okay. yet we did provide support at Supercross Motocross. So I would go to a few of the races in 2000, and and again, my my manager at that time knew my background, technical background from an engineering perspective, as well as. Uh, my knowing people within the motorcycle industry that I'd raced at somewhat of a level to at least understand uh, what the needs were or have an understanding of what riders' needs were uh, in, a, in our uh, racing series here. And uh, so that's where, yeah, that's where that, that happened was to help increase our footprint in Supercross and Motocross. So in 2001, uh, we signed a factory Suzuki team. And then I, that's when I, really was really began to be you know quote on the scene in the motorcycle industry because i was uh, attending each and every supercross and motocross 
beginning that year in 2001. Okay. Well, here we are in 2022. The new Starcross 6 is out as it continues mm-hmm. to, you guys continue to develop that tire. But there is not much of a footprint in Supercross and Motocross right now. Is there a, is that a marketing reason? Is it just fine? Like, what is the reason that it's not, you guys aren't in the, in the, uh, seen quite as much as some of the other brands. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's, um, and I would say that's, a um, a number of factors contributed to that. Um, so, so, so candidly, um, we were working, I was working with my counterparts in France who are focusing on, uh, motocross GP you mm-hmm. know, in Europe. And then I'm trying to focus on supercross and motocross here in the U S. Um, I think, you know, Michelin obviously is a global company and, and I think there was a bit more, unfortunately, I think there was a bit more priority on the needs for, uh, European motocross, which at that time was quite similar to European, I mean, sorry, was quite similar to American motocross, but certainly supercross was a, was a, a different, uh, a different and still is, you know, a different, uh, animal in itself. So, um, over the years, 2001, two, and three, um, I think that that we had a very good product, but I don't think that uh, we Michelin uh, maintained the level of, you know, development progression for the performance of our tires for Supercross that that we needed to, uh, in comparison to our competitors. And at that time, that primarily would have been Bridgestone and, and Dunlop. Uh, and again, I'm speaking about race spec tires where, you know, in the two, early 2000s, you know, I was working with, you know, Travis Pastrana and Kevin Windham and Grant Langston and David Pingree and different riders would have a different feeling or a different uh, performance expectation or something they wanted different from it. So I had to manage that with each and every you know, slightly different option that we had. And that's, that's the thing about race spec tires that people don't, you know, may, maybe understand is one, they're very short life yep. and there's subtle differences that cater to this rider or that rider. So anyway, so, um, <clears throat> I had to manage that and, and, and we just didn't continue to make the progression that, that I feel like we should have. Um, and, and so, in that we we lost the factory Suzuki team in 2004, and we continued with you know uh, Ryan Clark and Team Solitaire and and Subway Coca Cola, which you know Jason Thomas was was a racer on, and and Joe Aloff and others. So so we maintained our presence at the races and our involvement at the races, um, but our level of race results uh, declined. You know we went from winning a 2001. Eastern Region Supercross Championship with Travis Petrana, um, uh, a, a rear wheel failure, not a tire or moose, but a rear wheel failure, you know, with Grant Langston and KTM cost us a, an AMA National Championship in 2001 in the 125 class. Then with Brandon Jessamine, we won a um, 125 East Supercross Championship again. But then we, you know, the, the race results just weren't there. And and so I, I, I stopped traveling the entire series at the end of the 2005 and we had someone else come in and manage that, uh, Raymond cotton. He did that in Oh five, I'm sorry, Oh six and Oh seven. And then just from a more of a budget perspective of compared to, you know, spending a couple hundred thousand dollars a year in diesel fuel, um, uh, with the products that we had to offer and the race results we were getting, you know, our management, uh, made a decision to, to no longer be involved. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it has to be an astronomical cost. Yeah it, it, yeah, it is. And, and, and I, and I always have, uh, unlike a lot of people in the industry who think that their brand and their product is curing cancer, you know, we're, <laughs> we're, 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 in my case, we're selling motorcycle tires. Sure. Right? So let's keep it in perspective. So, um, so I'm always, I always have been respectful of other brands and, and, you know, now, for example, Dunlop is, is, it continues to be very dedicated to the sport of supercross motocross and off-road and, and and you know i admire that and, and appreciate their commitment to it and and then others have made their way in you know pirelli has for sure and, and maxis has and so yeah I, I i don't know the exact dollars but i know the commitment that it takes so you know i respect those brands and and their commitment now what what we have done differently uh in in 2021 was um or back in the 2020 actually you know my management then was asking well what can we do to improve our awareness and presence and off-road you know as a segment there's so many different 
subcategories of off-road. So um, we began some conversations um, with uh, with the GNCC racing series, and and uh, so at the for. 2021 we began uh, having on-site support uh, contingency and and supporting the grassroots uh, level of racing um, for the GNCC series and uh, I've had a lot of riders convert over to Michelin products um, they embraced you know our products and our bib moose uh, and, and 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 benefited from our trackside support there um, my coworker Brian Zerlo manages that and um, so our presence in 2021 enabled us to to secure a team that being the magna one motorsports uh you know husqvarna support team uh, for 2022 and and this year uh we've secured uh, with jordan ashburn the gncc the xc1 championship as well as uh, brody johnson won the xc3 championship so we certainly have great in my opinion, great racing success there. And, and those racers and that team are using the exact same, you know, Michelin tires and Michelin bib moose that, that any consumer can purchase from their, you know, favorite online retailer or local dealer. So, so we've got some racing success. It's just not, you know, obviously not in supercross motocross right now. Yeah. That, yeah. Uh, I'll actually be at the GNCC at Ironman and, uh, next not this weekend, but next, I believe. Yeah. I'm going to go, really? yeah, yeah. Going to yeah. go race that with KTM. You are. Yeah. Dude, that's cool. Have you, you're going to love it. I've, I've, in the years past, you know, I've had the opportunity with, with our relationship back then with KTM and, and, and with the likes of Shane Watts and Mike Lafferty to where they would, you know, maybe provide me a, a practice bike or a demo bike to, to ride. And, and I love the GNCCs. I, uh, actually raced a DNF the one early this year, the, the big buck early this year on racing the 1975 Husky 250. Yeah. And, uh, uh, I got, I got quite the looks from the other 50 plus, uh, a class riders when they were on their fancy e-start bikes and I'm on the 75 Husky. So it was <laughs> That's cool. So awesome. I love it. I love it. I'm looking forward to it. I've never done one, never raced off road race. So I can't wait. Hey, I, I'll promise you this, uh, when they get to a certain diameter, yeah. Trees don't move. Trees yeah, exactly. Don't move outside, so be careful, buddy. I will. I will. <laughs> it's good training for vet nationals, which I got a couple more Heck questions. Yeah, I'm going to ask you about that in a minute. But what okay, is yeah. with the Starcross Six out now? What is the future? What's next for in the next year or two for Michelin Two Wheel? Mm-hmm. So for us, we you know we we we're you know plan to continue uh you know our our involvement you know with, with GNCC racing. Um, I. You know, it's funny. Sometimes on the Pulp MX show, I get the question. You know, uh, Michelin, you guys aren't aren't in Supercross motocross now. What you know? What are your plans for the future? <laughs> you know, and I jokingly say, well, our current plan is to maintain our current level of commitment. <laughs> so, right. Um, so I don't I don't see that happening for us uh, in in the short term future. Um, so so you know, speaking with call it broad brushstrokes. You know, for Michelin, we we typically introduce a new uh, product in in varying segments you know every call it few years every you know in, in different product cycles have different um or different product segments have different product cycles for example um so you know uh, we've introduced you know, our michelin road six uh, this year along which is a sport touring tire um with exceptional wear characteristics and and mileage and wet performance etc cetera, etc cetera. and then we also introduced the michelin starcross six range um it was uh 2020 that we introduced the michelin commander three range so which is a cruiser tire so we typically we have a lot of things you know in the pipeline uh for for short term and long term um and we just continue to to work with that uh method where we're introducing a new product for um new segments um globally you know every every year or two yeah yeah i love it yeah the products are great i love the starcross sixes Mm -hmm. i have uh the the wild enduros on my mountain bike so guys don't forget about the bicycle side as well tons of different Mm -hmm. options on bicycle tires from michelin bike.michelin.com uh Mm -hmm. brady you're still racing you were recently here in east texas at diamond dawns at the vintage race you've done the daytona vintage race uh you did the red bull day in the dirt so you're still actively racing and having a good time and dude your form is awesome i got some good pictures of you Uh, (laughs) it's really cool just to see you out there and still pursuing your passion yeah for me it's uh thank you yeah it's for me 
I enjoy racing. I'll call it a modern bike. You know, I have a 2018 Husky 125 with the 150 cylinder on it. So it's a fun <laughs> little bike. You you can't ride it lazy, you know, like a four stroke. Um, you got to work to go fast. And I still love doing that. And I love the modern bike and I ride it, you know, at the Red Bull Day in the Dirt down south. But for me, I have a really strong emotional connection to the vintage bikes. Um, you know, I got the I got the same badass mustache that my, my dad had when he raced Husqvarna's open face and helmet the, and the open face helmet. You know, it's like a, like a, like we went fast, as you know, open faces win races. So um, <laughs> I certainly I certainly enjoy that. Uh, it's it's a emotional connection to. Again, my dad, and and he loves watching me race those bikes. And for me, it's super cool to go to these unique events where there's so much um, good fellowship amongst two-wheel enthusiasts and people who have a passion for the old bikes. And then I have the honor of being on the track and racing against uh, people like Jeff Stanton at Daytona, the vintage Supercross in Daytona, um, or Trampas Parker there in Texas. Like – for you know for me that's an honor to be out there you know racing with or battling with those guys yeah it's it's definitely an honor those guys are legends and you're out there ripping it up too i mean honestly like i said you were i was very impressed with your riding so it was cool to see uh last question i guess vet nationals are coming up i will be dominating pulp mexa steve mathis with my star cross sixes although he'll be on star cross sixes as well i'm sure Will you uh, make the trek to Vet Nationals at Glen Helen? Man, I don't know. You know that one's uh, that's something I I would love to attend. Um, and uh, you know, <laughs> to be honest with you, you know, as Steve always gives me a hard time saying, you know, everything's a production with you, Randy. And, yeah. You know, if anyone follows me on my social media, they know everything's a production with me. Um, I honestly am considering just flying out and not maybe not racing. But just being there for the content, because um, you know the, the the one year I did go, obviously I I had a blast uh, going and doing the practice day with Steve and 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 Chris Kiefer was nice enough to get me uh, from Yamaha YZ 250F that I I revved the guts out of like it was a two stroke and right. I learned apparently you're not supposed to do that, um, but we had a great time, uh, oftentimes at Steve's expense, but we had a great time and I would love to come back uh, this year and attend. So I got to look at the calendar and see if that's possible and. Uh, you know, you mentioned uh, Steve. Um, he's currently still riding on Michelin Star Cross Five tires um, because he hasn't ridden enough to wear them out. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm leaving actually later this afternoon to go to Red Bull Straight Rhythm, and then from there I'll be up in Vegas uh, Monday for the Pulp Mech Show. And uh, I have shipped him some tires, but I haven't promised him that I'll check them out. I got to see what his plan is and how serious he's taken this because uh, if he's not deserving of the the increased performance of the Michelin star cross six tires, then uh, he'll be riding on some used fives. All right. Well, he needs He better get ready because I'm in full training mode and I rode last night and I'm going to ride tomorrow and Saturday. So I'm ready. I'm putting some wear on my star cross sixes, but I'm looking forward to you being in the sh in studio Monday night for pulp. And I will be doing a pulp mix wrap up show sponsored by Michelin bicycle tires on Wednesday. So I look forward to it, but Randy, I know you're a busy guy. I've taken up a bunch of your time, and it's always an honor and a pleasure to get to visit with you. No worries at all, man. I, I appreciate the opportunity to chat with you, whether it's, uh, I'll call it, you know, professionally like this or just personally to, to catch up and see how life's going. And I'm, I'm, uh, I, I will, uh, I will, as I've shared with you personally, but I want others to know it as well. Um, it was not simply a haircut that got you where you are today. <laughs> um, it is certainly your work ethic and your passion for motorcycle and you know the 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 travel you've done in the past the articles you've written the relationships you've built and and your work ethic and quality of work have earned you the opportunity that you have right now with vital and man i'm i'm excited for you and i look forward to what your future within the motorcycle industry uh will be that means a lot coming from you man thank you very much and again it's it's been a just a pleasure becoming friends with you. So thank you. Absolutely. Same here, buddy. That feeling is mutual. But. All right, Randy. Well, I look forward to hearing you Monday night, and hopefully I'll see you at Glen Helen in about three weeks, maybe. Hope so, man. Hope All right. so. Thanks again, Jamie. Thanks. All right, Randy. Be safe. Thanks. All right, later. Bye. Bye.